All right, so I'm going to be showing you guys my latest airship. So this is my Iron Bird Mark IV. It's a continuation of the um, airship that I showed in my previous video, uh, my first uh, true airship. So this is, uh, I mean, this is made in the Create Mod. Um, this is a continuation of that airship. It does a lot of the same things. Uh, a few optimized things with a few new features, because what's better than... An airship that can get you around? Well, it's one that has some um, neat features and uh, lets you do some cool things. Alright, so I'll give you guys a tour. Since I did just spawn this in, um, I do have to uh, reset the redstone. Uh, and to do that, I'll just hit this button. So what that's going to do is it's going to move the ship forward. And it's, uh, it's going to make the redstone circuits uh, kind of wake up. So why is that important? Well, because I have some safety logic that stops me from doing bad things that will ruin the ship. Like rotating when the segments aren't in place. So, we're in the cockpit right now. I have this indicator light that, well, says when the segments are in place. When it's on, I can rotate, I can move, all that's enabled. I have a speedometer and a stressometer. So, first things first, this is the starter. When I hit the starter, the ship moves forward. All right, and we move forward 12 blocks because, um, yeah, because the piston is 12 blocks long. So you see, it took a little while to place all the blocks. It is a big ship. It's bigger than uh, the limit of 2,048 blocks, I think. So if you do bring this into world, you will have to increase the limit in your save. So in your world save, there's a file that you go in and you change uh, the number, change it to 4096. That should do the job. That'll do the job actually. So what do we have here? Well, this is the brake. Uh, when the brake is on, the ship will only move when I hit this button. When I take it off and I hit the button, it'll move forward uh, until I stop it. That does cause some lag and it has ruined some previous attempts at making videos, so I won't be showing that. Um, if you do want to see it though, you can import the schematic, uh, which I'll be including in the video description, and uh, import it to your own world. So what do we have here? Well, we have the up and down buttons. So, I'll show you guys, we'll go up. So, notice we're on Y level 15. I'll go ahead and hit that. And look at that, we're at level 16. Cool, so we went up. I'll also show, I'll also show you guys the turning. Uh, so we can turn right and left, just like we can go up and down. Uh, yeah, so here, we'll go right. So I'll hit this button. And there we are, right. So if this light was not on, um, well, we would not be able to turn right. So I'll go, sh I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys a bit about the turning and uh, you know the sensors that and the logic that turns uh, this light on. So if we head back here, uh, first thing I'll show you guys is the turning mechanism. It's just a simple uh, radial chassis connected to a bearing. We have some uh, some magma blocks and fans. The important part, though, is these two uh, sequence gear shifts um, and the redstone receiver. So this will this is what turns the ship. It's just 90 degrees in each direction. So how do I know my segments are in place for the logic to enable me to turn? Well, I use these redstone contacts right here. So there's one for each segment. Um, for, so one for the up, one for the down, and one for the main engines. One for the main engines right here. I love these Nixie tubes, you know. I was always getting confused about which one was up, which one was down. Not anymore. So that's, I really like these things. They're neat. So I'll go ahead and show you guys the logic. So this is what I call the interlock circuit. It's what, it locks the rotation, locks the movement when the segments are in place. Right now, all the segments are in place, so all these redstone receivers are receiving signal, and um, they're transmitting a true signal to this uh, redstone transmitter here, um, and that basically gives the all clear you can rotate. It's um, what it is, it's basically a three-way or um, inverted, so if any of these three are not in place, well, then one of these torches will come on, this redstone dust will turn on, turning off this torch, and we will not be able to rotate. 
So that's it for the movement of this ship. Um, so I said it had, you know, this ship has some uh, some extra features, some utilities. Um, so I put this little mining thing here. It's uh, got some drills connected to a secondary chassis and some barrels. Uh, since the barrels are connected, uh, any dirt that we dig up will go into the barrels. So back here I have the controls. I have a clutch. I also have a gear shift. Uh, the reason why... I'll let it dig. Yeah, so let it dig down. There's going to be dirt in those barrels. Whatever we dig up. So the reason why I have a clutch is because when you rotate the ship, it changes the shaft direction. So I don't want the shaft to change direction and... The yeah, I don't want it to deploy while I'm turning, so when I have it back in position, well, I like to turn the uh, the clutch back on. So yeah, so it's got this little mining utility. That's how it works. And whatever you dig up is going to be in the barrels. So, all right. So you also notice back here I have a lot of uh, magma blocks and fans. This is overkill for the ship, but I was messing around with deployers, which, by the way, use a lot of stress units. Um, I don't have those here anymore, but these are still here and they can power whatever other contraptions you want to add. I have these uh, fluid tanks back here. They're not connected to anything, but um, you can, you know, connect these to a pump and a hose and, you know, you can gather some lava or water or whatever you want. You know, it's another thing that the uh, ship can do. It's cool when ships can do things. All right, on to the last feature. So unfortunately, this feature will make the ship stop working. It is a TNT cannon. Um, no, it doesn't blow up the ship, but unfortunately, TNT explosions, when um, even when they're, you know, even when they happen in water, they do destroy the glue. When you destroy the glue, well, that makes the ship come apart when you try to move it. Um, specifically, rotation. The ship doesn't like that. And also, this secondary segment, for some reason, when it reaches some of the blocks that were, I guess, subject to the TNT explosion, um, it gets stuck and it doesn't want to retract anymore, so I can't actually move the ship anymore. Um, nonetheless, I'm going to show you guys uh, the TNT cannon in action. By the way, this glass block here is really important. If it's not there, this redstone will go into the block, activate this TNT, and it'll explode at the same time as these blocks, which um, will blow up the front of the ship because it's not in water. Uh, so there you go. So I'm going to go activate this thing. So I have the firing controls here. Just go ahead and hit the button. TNT is activated. And there we go. So that's probably close to 100 blocks. Of course, we're up 16 blocks. So if it was close to the ground, it would be would be as far. But that's, uh, you know, I think it's a decent small TNT cannon. All right, so there you have it. That's the ship. It's got a few neat utilities. Um, yeah, so I guess my next video is gonna be it's gonna be a smaller ship. I wanna make some optimizations. You know, have it lag less. I have some more efficient designs that I've already come up with, and I've also uh, watched a lot of videos and spoken to some people, and I've gotten uh, some really cool ideas that I wanna try to implement. So. Yeah, so there you have it. Um, so uh, I will be putting a, a link to the schematic file in the video description. And remember, if you import into your world, you're going to have to hit that button like I showed you earlier on uh, just to fix the redstone. And uh, yeah, so, um, well, thank you for watching the video. And I hope you enjoyed it.